Welcome to another episode of Writings from the Hills, a special series of videos spotlighting books about Appalachian culture and the people, including fiction and nonfiction books. And today, we're actually going to be reading a book called A Little Better Than Plum, a biography of a house. And this was actually wrote by Henry and Janice Holt Giles. And a special uh, thank you should be given out to the University Press of Kentucky for permitting us to use this book for the program. Chapter one, Greek, the creeks don't run uphill. Mr. G holds with the theory that husbands generally have an easier time of it. Wives are at least temporarily happier and there is less stir, sturm on the drain all around. If the thin reason with it, wives are allowed to believe they have their own way. It does no great harm, I said to Cavadi and a new, newly wedded friend one day, and it keeps the peace. Peace by appeasement, the friend scoffed. Not so, my spouse stoutly denied. Peace by strategy. Think of it this way. Is it earth shaking, whether she living room walls are blue or yellow? Is it universally important where the rose bushes are planted? Will it start a war if the wall to wall carpeting is a acrylic instead of a wood, wool? And will Latin American relationships be disturbed if you have to wear a tie that you don't like? Lawfully, the young Benedict replied, perhaps not, but just the same, I intend to be the man of my family. You think I'm not, Mr. Jean murmured? That's the secret of my policy. On small things, my friend, give. Give like an elastic band. Give till it hurts. Save your strength for the issues that matter. On really important things, assert yourself firmly and strongly. On really important things, stand up on your hind legs and roar. Put up with no shilly shying on the really important things. Bell like the bull of fashion and broke no interference. The young friend pondered. What, he asked then, a trifle timorously, are the important things? Mr. G settled deeply and delightedly into his chair. First, he began, and I fled. I didn't need to hear more. I remembered all too well the times he had roared like the bull of Basham and what about. I knew what was coming. It was a matter of breakfast for the first time. When I met Mr. G in 1943, my household had, for a good many years, consisted of myself and my daughter Libby, and we lived in Louisville, Kentucky. We had come from the Southwest in 1940 when I was offered a position as a secretarial assistant to the Dean of the Louisville Presbyterian Seminary. It proved to be a wise and happy move, for I had an almost ideal working situation, and Libby loved everything but the weather about Kentucky. In 1943, she was a freshman, freshman in the University of Louisville, beautiful as a gypsy and a dizzyingly heady, heady, a dizzyingly heady bottle of champagne. This could have gone on forever as far as I was concerned, but my child naturally had her own life to live in the summer of 1943. In the summer of 1944, she bravely married her young man six weeks before he flew across the Atlantic to join the 15th Air Corps in Italy. A so statement I sometimes make too often ha offhandedly was that I was not married until after my daughter was married. This causes a double take occasionally. But I assume it's understood that she is born of a prior marriage. Younger and more adventurous, Libby and Nash did not wait as Mr. G and I did for the war to end. I think I would have waited, however, under any circumstances for a marriage, for however I fond of Mr. G I was, a stepfather, while she was still at home and at her age was something I would have thought about a long, long time before giving her. Had I met Mr. G earlier, when he had been a real father to her, I shouldn't have hesitated a second. But by the time he and I knew each other well enough to begin to think of marriage, Libby was almost 19 and deeply in love with Nash Hancock, a young man of whom I hardly approved. In any event, it was all, be it was all becoming academic when Mr. G was picked up willy-nilly with no forewarning and deposited in England to await an invasion. Libby dashed off Tucson to marry and came home for another winter with me when Nash went to Italy. 
It was two years before I saw Mr. G again. Would like to read more about Janice Holt Giles and Henry Giles' home. Uh, you can check out A Little Better Than Plum uh, from our library. Just go to our catalog at www.briggslibrary.com. And again, thank you to the University Press of Kentucky for allowing us to use this book. Thank you. Mm -hmm.